Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing the Iron Hands Clan Company Avenue logo. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon page is a link below. Now onto the video. So the first colour we're going to use is Vallejo White. And to be honest, the only two colours we're really going to use in this is Vallejo White and Vallejo Black. But whichever black and white paints you usually use is sound. And what I'm going to do here is because the cog is basically a circle. Just had the blind sliding open on sound in the background there. Because the cog is basically a circle, I've done a cross in the middle where I want to have the circle done. And then we're just going to do the bottom left hand corner each side so you can see the usual principle that I use to do circles. This is another way if you want to try and get the circle a bit more even and give yourself a bit more guidance on it. You can draw a cross in the middle of it and then join up those sections and then just make sure that they're round. We're going to use a little bit of Vallejo black just to touch up those outside edges and get that more circular. And all it is is a case of filling in the white and getting that as smooth a colour as you want it to be. If you follow us on Instagram, you probably found the picture that I did with the Iron Hands the other day. It was this chap that I was working on. I was quite interested to see how they each have a different company badge rather than just having the armour trim. So now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo black and start taking out the hexagon in the middle. But yeah, I was quite impressed to see that they each had a different company logo rather than just the armour trim being slightly different colour. But then I was also disappointed because of my thing for painting the logos freehand. That's going to be nine different logos to do for the iron hands alone. So you'll probably see them cropping up from time to time on a Sunday. But if you collect iron hands and there's a specific one that you want to see, just let us know and I'll try and get that one done sooner than the rest. So with the hex gun, because you've got three vertical kind of points on it, I always do a larger line for where the top and the bottom point are, and then on each side do a vertical for where the sides are too. You don't have to get these perfect because you will be touching it up. You can see that's not a perfect hexagon by any standard. But it gives you the basic shape which you can then work from. So all you do is you are joining up the vertical points and joining up the tops of those together and the bottoms of those together to give you that rough hexagon shape. And then we shall be sorting out with a little bit of white and a bit more black and just tweaking it here and there just to make those outside edges the same length to make the points at the top and bottom the same pointiness and just working through it like that trimming down the sides trimming down the top and bottom maybe adding a little bit of black here and there just to fill that out and get that to the right shape So again, using a little bit of white. I'm going to start tweaking that hexagon in there. It's always easier to do a downward stroke, so if you are painting this, or painting lines, it's always worth going top to bottom with it. Try not to nudge the camera as you do it, and you get that kind of seasickness effect. A little bit of a jump there, we're in off camera. But here we are just tweaking the hexagon a little bit each way. You can see there that the top is a different angle to the bottom and the sides are slightly different length too, so we're going to keep tweaking that with a little bit of black and white. If you see me holding it up and just holding it steady for a few seconds, that's because I'm looking at it to see where it needs to be shortened, where it needs to be lengthened. So 
if you work at one point at a time, so if you work on like sort of the bottom point or one of the points on the sides and just get those angles right and get those bits fine. Now here you can see you've come into where I'm doing the cogs. You can see the cogs that I've done on the right hand side and the cogs that I'm working on on this corner here, the bottom left corner. All I'm doing is putting two lines roughly where I want those and then we're going to use a little bit of black to fill in those two lines. Once you've filled those in, we'll then be coming back with some of the white to get those into the right shape and smooth off the top of them so that they aren't brush shaped or rounded. As well as doing it with the two points like I did earlier, you can just do the little straight line and put a line in for the where the middle of the background colour is going to be and just spread it out from that little piece. There's pros and cons to doing it each way, but doing the cogs you will have to do a lot of back and forth between the black and the white, getting those straightened up, getting them so that they're all flush and roughly the same size. All that is is keep going over them, going round it and tweaking them here and there just to get them to be the right shape. It's worth being careful when you're doing this. Try and save as much time as possible, just getting them flat on the inside. You can see there I'm just tweaking the edge of that hexagon as well to make sure it's roughly the right shape. And here I'm doing a little line to smooth off the underside of those little bits of background black coming through. All you'll do is keep doing this for the whole thing, going around trying to get them all roughly the same size. And it does take a lot of time, a lot of effort. I think the unedited video footage is about 20 minutes to do this one. Obviously, once you've done one, you'll be able to get that time shorter and shorter the more practice you give it. Bit off screen there sorry about that as i say this is all just tweaking the edges of those cogs and trying to get them roughly the same size now i'm going to start working on that skull so the clan company avenue badge has a skull in the center they all have like different emblems in the center of the cog these guys have a skull so we're going to do the smooth top of the skull and when you get round to this like part here where you've got the edges of the cranium, you're going to have the little cheekbones sticking out just a little bit. So you're going to put a little kind of nodule, a bit of a lump sticking out of those bits, like so. Where that lump comes down, you are going to join it together and add a couple of teeth at the bottom of that. So you're going to get that cheekbone on the right hand side too like so we're just going to do some careful downward strokes just to get those little teeth on there. 
Now the teeth on it are really fine, the lines in them are really, really fine as well. So if you do join them all up together, it is a really, really tiny icon that, a really tiny skull. So don't worry too much if you do join them up together. If you get them joined together and you want to put those lines in, you can use a really fine detailed brush. I'd always use the Army Painter character brush, but there's loads of different ones that people use. And you can just put the little breaks in those teeth with a really tiny bit of paint and a downward stroke from where you want the top of the tooth to be. And separate them all out. The final thing to do once you've finished all this is any highlights on the shoulder pad. So I've used German grey on the black here. It's just to touch those up in the little cutouts on the cog to make sure that the highlights go all the way to where they should do. And that is the finished Iron Hands Marine and the cog that we've been working on on that right pauldron. I'm happy about how it turned out. It should look great on the tabletop. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.